Aloha, I'm your host, Krista Sadler. Welcome to the Condo Insider Show, where we explore all topics relative to condo living and your condo investment. Today, our guest is Brandon Keenan with Atlas Insurance, here to discuss the second half of our series, Condo Homeowners Insurance 101. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Happy to have you here. I believe we had you here in October of last year, and we didn't even touch the tip of the iceberg. So we wanted to bring you back to uh, further our discussions about condo insurance related to homeowners associations. So Thank you. we're going to jump right into the things that are pertinent and prevalent right now in the industry. Okay. And I know you have some things to talk about. So let's start I off with what is a hard market versus a soft market. I always hear the you know that terminology. What does that mean? Well, uh, that's a great question. And so I would tell you that um, in a uh, we're actually coming out of a soft market. So we'll start with a soft market. A soft market is where uh, insurance companies um, you know they have lower premiums. They have uh, higher competition between insurance carriers. Um, they're uh, relaxed underwriting criteria. Uh, so, in other words, um, uh, there's a lot of money in flow through investments and through underwriting profits uh, from the, uh, based on their underwriting guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so, you have a lot more selection. You have a lot more uh, broader coverages. So, in other words, instead of, um, you don't have to endorse policies as much. Um, and when they, you say uh, you don't have to endorse product you don't have to endorse policies. Define what that means when you say that. What you don't have to endorse policies that much. What do you mean specifically? I'm talking as a, well, a lay person out there wanting to yeah. understand the terminology, which probably is very. You use it every day, so. Oh yeah. Um, well, so a lot of times um, when you have a policy um, and you go to an agent and you and you get the policy based on your particular circumstances or situation, uh, you, the policy might be broad enough. In other words, it might offer a broad range of coverage based on how the policy is written that would give you additional coverages. For example, uh, if you had a swimming pool exposure or you had, um, uh, you know, any kind of uh, contractors coming on property and you wanted to, you know, have, be, make sure that your AOA was protected uh, in the event that something happens. Um, so... In that respect, if you didn't have the broader form coverage, then you would have to uh, endorse those specific line item coverages to make sure you had coverage for those things. So if you didn't have a pool, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily need that coverage. But uh, in, in this scenario, just an example, of course, um, you would in fact um, want to ask for that endorsement if, you, if it wasn't being offered on your policy. Right, okay, so they're kind of like add-ons in a way, additional endorsements. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And you can have any number of endorsements. Um, and of course, uh, the other point that I would like to make while we're talking about endorsements is um, policy language. So um, in the event that uh, you have an umbrella over the top, so it's an excess amount of coverage over your underlying limit, uh, for example, let's say a $5 million liability limit on your AOAO and you, you want a $20 million uh, umbrella because you're concerned about the various exposures you have on your property and you just want to make sure that the AOAO can be indemnified or can be protected in the event that something occurs. Um, some are as high as 50, some are as high as 75 million. And um, if the underlying policy language uh, restricts a coverage, that coverage will not carry through to the umbrella. It will not be offered. So if you wanted to, that coverage to carry through, you would make sure that your policy was properly endorsed or had the right types of coverages that you wanted the umbrella to cover. And then everything all the way up is, is covered by that. All right, so we're coming out of the soft market where those, the, it's less expensive and whatnot. So tell us what's happening now that it's a hard market. What's changing? Well, we're, the mainland's already experienced in a hard market situation, and um, Hawaii is kind of its own little uh, microcosm here. And we we see things kind of delayed from how things occur on the mainland. And so, uh, what happens in a hard market is uh, insurance carriers start to 
uh, reduce capacity. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the other thing that they do is um, they start to tighten their underwriting guidelines, meaning, you know, depending on the type of risk we're talking about, in this case, an AOAO, if um, carrier A says, you know, we're tightening our guidelines because we, we can't afford to take any more losses in this uh, particular area. So we're only looking for these types of properties that they know uh, should not have as many losses. Um, and so they, that's how they control their, their profits by not ex overextending themselves as, as when it comes to risk. So if they take on an older building, for example, an older AOAO um, that may be not so well maintained, uh, the chances of that building experiencing a lot of loss uh, is very good. And mm, so uh, a newer building that is, um, you know, sprinklered and uh, non-combustible materials, and um, it's got all these various safety features uh, in the building, the underwriter says, hey, you know, the chances of that building experiencing a loss are a lot less. And so um, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend my marketing efforts to that, and I'm going to underwrite for those kind of risks. So um, that's this, how they know when they take in premium, they're going to they're gonna be okay. This brings two questions to mind as you're, as you're talking. So it, have you ever run, run across a situation where you have an older building like that, that just can't get insured? And, and also set part two, I'll remind you if you forget, are there ways that a building, even if it's older, can make improvements that will affect the cost of their insurance coverage down the line? Yeah. That's a very good question. Um, I would say, uh, yes, insurance can be obtained. Um, that's the good news. The, um, what we like to try to do is in the, with these older buildings, um, we, we try to, you know, the conversation I like to have is I want them to be proactive uh, on the maintenance element of the building. Um, the reason I want them to do that is because I know the underwriting guidelines are gonna start to tighten and when they do, um, the buildings that aren't taking care of themselves and are experiencing what I would call preventable losses and a lot of these water losses are, um, they're gonna be cast out, if you will, into the standard marketplace where uh, they're gonna see two, three, four, up to five times what they were originally paying for insurance. Wow. So not only are you paying all this extra money now for insurance, because by law you have to have insurance on your AOAO, but at the same time, you still have to take care of your building. You still have those maintenance costs that, that you're gonna have to continue to do. So it, it makes a lot more sense to, to be proactive and, and go after those things. Yeah, for many, many reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as people's renewals are coming up throughout this year and the, and the market's hardening, you mentioned um, you know, that, that there were, they'd have to go to a different market. I'm so sorry, I forget the exact terminology, but okay. um, like a, I don't wanna say a lower or lesser market, but what is the preferred, what would you have, what would you consider them to be covered by from a preferred standpoint? Are there carriers that are considered, is that the right terminology, preferred or? That, that, yeah, I would say preferred and standard. And so uh, ideally you wanna remain in a preferred market. Uh, the premiums are lower, the coverages are broader. Um, and what I always like to point out is that, you know, uh, insurance really is a relationship. We always talk about relationships here in Hawaii. And I will tell you that um, we have three people in this relationship. We've got the broker or the agent, we've got the AOAO, and we've got the insurance carrier. So a lot of times we look at the insurance carrier as this uh, other entity that, you know, we pay premiums to. And uh, at some point, if we ever have a claim, uh, they come in and, and they, uh, they help us out. So it's called the transfer of risk. So we say, look, for this monthly payment or annual premium, uh, if something were to happen to our AOAO, uh, minus our deductible or our self-insured limit, um, we're gonna, they're gonna come in and, and they're gonna save the day. They're gonna, they're gonna tap out and they're gonna take over. So, and so what, what do the preferred carriers provide that the others don't, or why are they considered preferred? Okay, so I would Did say, I uh, for, yeah, I know what you mean by that. Um, I would say that the preferred carriers are gonna offer a broader form of coverage. So, um, uh, so they're gonna encompass a lot of coverages in your policy that are important to your AOL. They, 
when they write those policies, they write them specifically for AOAOs, so they, they understand the types of coverages that are going to be important to you. And they're just going to include those uh, in the form of what are called, uh, sometimes they're called endorsements, sometimes they're called enhancements, but at the same time, uh, they, they would include them. So um, in a standard market, it's like a la carte. So you're going to have mm, to. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to have to add back those coverages. So that you're going to start out with a pretty much a stripped down policy. And then you're going to say, okay, based on the risk exposure that I have, I need to add back all these different endorsements. And as you add those things back in, your premium uh, will reflect that. So it's going to cost more to m most likely to use one of the non preferred. Correct. And they're, and they're probably not as experienced with handling the different things that come up related to AOAO, you know, association managed properties, I would think, if it's not really their specialty. Well, well it's not their specialty, but they, they yeah, and, and they would, you know, they kind of, uh, they know they have you. They know that, that if you've been non-renewed by your preferred carrier, that you're already in trouble. And so if uh, you've gone to the, the preferred carriers and they've all turned you down, uh, the standard carriers like, I'm your option. So this is what you've got. This is, and then you basically uh, try to clean up your act in that period of time as, you, as you're out in the standard marketplace. And you probably want to do that in a pretty big hurry. Um, and that's part of the relationship I talked about earlier. So if I've advised, if I know that you are looking to me to help you maintain your position with the preferred market, then I'll have that conversation with you. Uh, you'll, be proactive in taking care of the things that I would recommend to you, like the, uh, you know, taking care of uh, high risk components, you know, like water hoses uh, to dishwashers and, uh, and washing machines and uh, refrigerators and things like that. Mm -hmm. If um, you're doing that and I can show the carrier, Hey, look, these guys, uh, um, not only being proactive, but they hired a company uh, to come in and do all these different uh, maintenance uh, pieces for them. And as a result, um, the underwriter's like, great, you know what, I, I want that business because these people understand the relationship. They, they want a good carrier and I want a good risk. So uh, that's the agent's uh, position is to advise the AOAO and to have a conversation with the underwriter and say, you know, um, this is why I think you should give this risk Brandon? a chance. Yes? We have to go to a break in a minute. But <laughs> or very okay, soon. Sorry. But I wanted I, I want to talk more about how why does it shift? What is contributing to it shifting? Why does it go from soft market to hard market? But we're going to talk about that okay. when we get back. I'm so sorry to interrupt okay, you. Great. We'll be right back. No, everyone. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man. Every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen. Look into Stan Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I have a TV show based on my book, which is also called Beyond the Lines. And it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. We are having a fun drive for Think Tech Hawaii. And please, 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 please help us keep these shows going. Please go on our website, thinktechhawaii.com, to donate. Thank you. Aloha. Welcome back to Condo Insider. I am your host, Krista Stadler, and we are here with Brandon Keenan with Atlas Insurance, who is talking to us a little bit about the difference between a soft and hard market. And uh, we are kind of going into that hard market now and I am going to let him expound on what he was talking about before the break unless he's ready for me to ask another question. What do you think, Brandon? Um, you know, oh, you know, uh, just to wrap that up, so um, if you have an agent who's proactive and working with you and then has a good relationship with the carrier and underwriter, then even if you are a marginal risk or, but you were doing all the things that that I can present to the underwriter and show them that look, they're working their way back to a place where they would like to be because they have a, they have a scale that they can use even within the preferred carrier. You could be at the bottom end of the scale. You could be at the top end of the scale. Um, and so 
with that conversation and that relationship, uh, the underwriter understands a lot more about the risk, and so they're more willing to extend better pricing. Excellent. All right. So now I would like to ask you, why does the market change? What is what is impacting the economy or what is shifting that's making it go from a, a soft market to a hard market? Well, uh, so that's a good question. And, and because these are somewhat foreign terms, the hard market is, uh, is, is upon us be, for a number of reasons. And what that means essentially is that insurance carriers are gonna start charging uh, higher premiums uh, because they're not bringing in the same level of profit that they were before. In fact, because of catastrophic events that have been taking place, like the fires in Australia, um, like um, uh, you know the, the various catastrophic uh, losses we've had in our own state, like uh, uh, Eva and Aniki, and those those really took a hit with some of the local insurance companies, as well as some of the international ones. And so what happens is, and they're paying out more money than they're taking in and their investments aren't performing, and so they have to start doing something about that. So what they do, they start tightening their underwriting guidelines. They start saying, look, we're not gonna write, you know, wooden frame anymore. We're just gonna write, you know, concrete that are sprinkler. That's all we wanna write. We don't, we don't want all those other older buildings that are subject to losses and things like that. Uh, we need to recover from that situation. And um, so hopefully they're, and the other thing that happened is capacity. So where you could go to one carrier to get all of your coverages, uh, for like property and casualty. So in a sense for the building, um, and then you talk about general liability, which uh, indemnifies the AOAO and also, you know, uh, hopefully in this case, the board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, and you, they once had a $50 million umbrella. The, uh, the carrier who was writing those $50 million umbrellas now is only gonna offer 20 million. And you're like, wow, well, we need 50 million. I mean, that's what we have written in our bylaws and, you know, and that's what we want to indemnify for. So now uh, you have to go out to two or maybe three carriers to obtain that same level of capacity. And so, of course, with that comes higher premiums and uh, that's, and that's just the inevitability of the marketplace. And that's going to go back to what we talked about last week, which we're going to talk about Cheryl Franklin, our, one of our hosts, will talk about going forward, which is that's going to impact the budget, right? <clears throat> which is going to ultimately Definitely. impact the homeowner's dues. And I mean, it's just a snowball effect right down the line. Yeah, it very, is. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, I want to, uh, and I, I talk about it all the time, and I, I do it because I, I really do care about uh, either rehabilitating an AOAO or helping one that's in good position to stay in good position because that could that could change in, in one giant loss. And uh, mm. if it's preventable, we should, we should have that discussion. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. So, um, well, we are, well, I have this question for you, which you helped me write, but how will that affect the AOAO space? So, um, not sure what the terminology space means. Oh, you know, that's kind of a term that just says, uh, within this particular specialty market, um, what, how is that going to affect the AOAOs? So one of the things they're going to have to do is obviously, um, they're going to have to budget differently. Um, they're going to want to implement a lot of the, um, inspections, the high risk component inspections that I talk about all the time, uh, just because uh, at that point you've created a baseline. Because right now it, you don't know. You don't you don't know what uh, was the last time that hose was ever changed out. Or I even re recommend wax rings, which are not even technically uh, on the high risk component uh, scenario. But it it would make sense to me for the the low cost that it would be uh, to go ahead and take care of that. And now you have a baseline. So you go okay. All right, I took care of this whole condo uh, on this whole floor, and so. We shouldn't, you know, the likelihood of us having a loss is considerably less. It's yeah. not to say that it would ever be completely eliminated, but it would certainly be considerably less. What do you, what would you say just in the state of Hawaii or f of what you've experienced, the, what are the biggest um, losses? What are the reasons for the biggest losses? Is it, is it floods? Is it fire? Is it, you know, injury? Uh, uh, People, you know, what type of things come across well, your... Well, we've had uh, one, we have some of the largest DNO claims. So 
uh, in the in the entire United States in Hawaii. I mean, we our loss uh, ratio is is terrible here. Um, we just had one of the largest payouts uh, in DNO uh, insurance. It was uh, over a board that didn't really take into consideration all the responsibilities that they had and not and just, you know not being not being even handed with uh, how they treated uh, the various unit owners and so uh, in that that happened on Maui and and anyone who knows about uh, this uh, space if you will would would remember that loss um, it, it's lectured on by lawyers and as an example of what not to do um, and right, define other, define say, DNO for those of us out in the world that don't know what that means <laughs> oh okay yeah sorry uh, directors and officers okay. so those are your board members and they, of course, uh, have responsibilities to the AOAO. Um, it is a volunteer position. Um, however, it also carries a lot of responsibility and uh, th that requires uh, various specialties in either, you know, hopefully finance and let's say have some kind of business uh, experience so that they know that when they're having their meetings and they're talking about the business of their AOAO, they have some sense of of what it is they're they're doing so the claims you're seeing are related to the effect of the directors and, and and officers not handling something that was deemed by the court apparently i would imagine as like Correct. a fiduciary responsibility or whatever decision they made there was some kind of liability tied to that is that right and then the, the insurance that's, company has to pay it out that's correct the other one would be um, being ada compliant Mm -hmm. So there was uh, there was a situation on Maui where uh, a gentleman was essentially traveling from AO to AO and finding out that they were not ADA compliant and filing a lawsuit and thereby was uh, able to to do well for himself there uh, and that that caused a great deal of loss and as a result you know it caused a shift in the marketplace and then premiums are affected accordingly and and everyone shares in that by the way wow. Is that just the last one that you just spoke of? Is that something that's based on the year that the property was built? I mean, if it was built before a certain year, is there, and they didn't have things built to support that, would it not be, I don't want to say grandfathered in, but in newer buildings have to have certain, you know, things for accessibility from a handicap perspective, but an older property maybe doesn't? Or is that true? Is that true or is that not true? The older properties would have to be. Brought up to somehow. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All and, right. Yeah. And so as a result of that, they're, you know, it's, it's something smart to get on because uh, otherwise you could end up at the wrong end of a lawsuit. And uh, whereas, yeah, the insurance company paid for that. Well, guess what? Now you have that large loss. It was a preventable loss on your insurance. Mm. And now. It would have you know, cost a lot less to have dealt with it on the front end and had it done correctly than have to deal with it on the back end. And. Have a huge payout yeah before we run out of time um and we could go back to some things if we do have time but i know you have an event coming up um and i wanted to have you share a little bit about about that from an educational standpoint for people here on oahu that may want to attend oh yeah uh, so thank you for bringing that uh up and we uh, actually yes we are putting on a seminar where we're actually going to have all three of the major insurance carriers that are here in the state of hawaii and um, that would be uh, Allianz, First Insurance, and DB Insurance. Uh, it'll be a panel of speakers, and it'll be uh, each of the carriers will speak to uh, essentially a lot of what I said earlier. They're going to talk about their what they're called as an appetite. So in other words, what are they looking for? And mm -hmm. um, and they'll they'll express all that. They'll talk a little bit about their companies and, uh, and how they perform and who handles the uh, you know the claims and how that all works because everybody always wants to know how the claims handle uh, are handled and then there'll be an opportunity for question and answer uh, towards the end and I will actually be uh, monitoring that uh, for uh, I'll be talking to the you know the different carriers and and helping them get their message okay. out okay thank you all right I may have to attend that myself Sounds very good. Yeah it, yeah. it should be very educational. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a few minutes left, but um, is there anything 
really pertinent that we missed in this conversation that you want to share with the audience? Well, um, so I would say that um, we're looking at a hardening market. So what we want to do is we want to do everything we can to, to keep ourselves in the right place. So we want to take care of those inspections. We want to put the money into the repairs. We're going to have to do it anyway. Let's just get it done. And uh, the insurance carriers will reward you for that. And I just think that's the, that's the right way to approach it. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm so happy that you were able to join us, and I hope everybody that's here in Oahu um, can attend the event on the 27th, correct? It is actually on the 27th, Okay. and it's um, from 8 to 11.30 at the Japanese Cultural Center. Uh, I ask that anyone who uh, was going to attend, please RSVP, um, and we have, uh, uh, I could send you a flyer or... Um, you could contact us at the AOAO uh, division of Atlas, um, and, I've, and we'd be able to uh, assist you from there. Okay, very, very good. Um, also wanted to mention, once again, I, don't, I know these folks, our folks in the studio probably don't have this ready to, to go up, but if you are interested in sharing any ideas or thoughts or suggestions or potential guests that you'd like to see or topics on Condo Insider, please email us at condoinsiderhi at gmail.com. Um, next week, the 13th, Jane Sugimura is going to be giving a legislative update uh, what is pending at the 2020 legislation. And then next week, no, excuse me, next month, the first week, the first Thursday of the month, March 5th, I will be um, interviewing Randy Traeger regarding very, very important fire code updates, uh, new ordinances that are taking effect, and timelines to get those changes done within a, your condo association, and also um, particulars about, you know, what the criteria is of who would be um, required to do, to make those changes within your, within your condo. So thank you all very much, and you all have a great week, and look forward to seeing you next month. And we'll look forward to having you uh, view Jane's show next week on Thursday. Aloha.